I'll just put the Insta ban on. There's my thing on my head. basically getting the wax off. The wax that rises to the surface. And then when I come back, it will start cutting right into the finished coat. There we go. Now, now we're actually cutting in. And I'm just getting the surface I'm going to go and get my other right shoes on, so I'll be back in two
in a fair bit. Nice and slow. You don't rush this. There's no advantage on going quicker. It just doesn't cut as good. You've got to go nice and slow and it'll cut the 400 down so you've got it all even, no wax left on it. I text Alan and him and his Natalie are going to pick the board up on Saturday. This is all good. He's obviously probably at work. pretty well be cutting everything even so I'll have no irregularities in the surface. It'll be cut into the finish tape but not too far. Because then I use the 800 and that gets rid of these 400 scratches. Then I use the 1200 which gets rid of the 800 scratches. And then it'll be easy to polish from that point on. There we go, that looks good. Now I switch over to 800. Tin of 77 is about to run out. getting it, the size, the model and the glass job. You can see it's got a 7 and a 7 on deck and a 7 and a 4 on the bottom. Because this board is thin, 
Um, you know, you cut into the foam on the bottom a bit, so you need to make sure you reinforce the fiberglass a little bit, just so you haven't got a, a weaker bottom or anything like that. Not that it would, but I always like overkill. Stronger than it needs to be. It doesn't mean it's unbreakable, of course. If you get sucked over the falls and the board goes into the sand nose first, it can still break, don't worry about that. It's just general wear and tear, it should be pretty well right. I don't have many of my boards break. Two passes, wet it again. Part of the reason why I've been doing these, um, building up a good YouTube thing now, I'm going to determine to get a lot of info up there, is um, the main reason is to show people that are looking at surfboards that they're buying off someone that does the whole lot. Um, polish, finish coat, sand, glass, make the fins. The next three boards I've got coming through, I'm making three pigs. And they're going to be um, two, one for Australia and two for California. Um, but fit these pigs. But I'm going to be making the fins as well. And it just will show you what um, what's involved. And the board I've got going, the boards, the 50 pig, even the profile I, I made, the profile of it um, uh, I'll be using. Dale Belsey had a guy, I think his name was Abel, Abel, sorry, Abel Gnomes, and he made his profile. I know um, Greg Knoll had one too, for when they were doing their balsa boards early on. And uh, you'll see that the profile that I have has characteristics like that one, but we just use a little bit different equipment and cutting mechanism and so forth, but still. And that's the difference. Um, showing people that you're doing the whole lot. As I said, I'm, I'm totally appalled at so many of the ones that don't. and I encourage ones to learn how to do it all the time, definitely. Pose it away.
And you notice this part is very boring, very slow, but it's the most important part of the polish job. The actual buffing is nothing. A monkey can do that. This is the part that determines whether or not the buffing part comes up easy or not. Because what you're doing is cutting back the surface and preparing it for, for the actual polishing. Now this is the second pass of the 1200. I just have two more passes of the 1200. Then I flip it over and do the same on the other side. And then the polishing starts. When this is, when I'm actually buffing this, wow, it's going to look beautiful, this yellow. As you can see, I'm going very slow. I'm trying not to speed up, I don't want to, because if I speed up, it's just not going to cut back properly. You see why we float the sticker on top of the tinted resin, so the resin doesn't lose its whiteness around the outside of my sticker. If I did it underneath the yellow, that would turn yellow. So that's why we float the stickers on. The main reason why I like to have that sticker in that position is so when people are laying on their board, they know where to position that sticker after a while so they'll be in the right position. So as soon as they fall off and lay back on, they know to get in the right position real quickly. Because with Malibu's, if you're too far forward or too far back, it can work against you a little bit. So. Now at the moment this box has got two layers of six ounce over the top of it. This is where I route that out. That's why you never see that crack there at front of the box on my boards. Okay, and if you do, it's fucking rare as hen's teeth. You have to have hit something pretty darn hard. It doesn't happen on its own. Well, I'll tell you a funny story. I remember a guy I worked with for a while, known him for a few years. Um, his name was Dooley. He passed away, um, I think, a year or so ago. Nice, good guy. Very good guy. Always um, didn't say too much. Wasn't full of himself or anything. It was quite a quite a decent guy. He was. Anyway, um, I remember once he had a guy come in and uh, told him all serious oh my fin fell out I don't know how like his plugs um, or actually I think it was, it was glass on that's right and he said my fin fell out I didn't hit anything and then as quick as a flash Dooley said 
Yeah, we have the same problem in the showroom. Every morning, we've got to um, get a broom and sweep all the fins that fall out of boards. And uh, the guy knew then that he was uh, a dickhead because fins don't fall out on their own, they hit something. But when, when someone comes in saying, I don't know how it fell out, I didn't hit anything. Basically, your fin can be hit on the side or you know it can be hit so many ways to uh, uh, to rip it out but that was the best comeback I ever heard yeah every morning before we open up we get a broom and sweep up all the fins Right, so this is a 400. So what I'm doing here is the important cut. This is the one that makes sure it's all nice and flat. Cut into the finish coat. And then once I do this, I do the 800. Then the 1200. And next week I um, put up the price of polish jobs, $50. So now to get a shorty polished, um, it's $150, not $100. And to get a mal polished, it's um, $200. So all the prices of everything's gone up. The polishing pads are like $65. The glue, uh, sorry, glue. The, um, what do you call it? The uh, polish has gone up, 240 bucks. Everything's just gone up wet and dry. So, it's all getting very expensive, but with those rises, everything has to go up with it, you know what I mean? So, If you end up doing stuff for nothing, you go out of business real quick. But the main reason why most people don't polish their boards is because it's so expensive. It is very expensive to, if you go to a glass shop and, um, Try and get someone to polish your board, it won't be cheap. Probably be 250. That just means everything goes up 50 bucks on the price list. We've had a few price rises over the last year, especially. Um, our blanks went up a couple of times, our resin's gone up. A resin now is is around 190. To, oh, 190 to um, 200 to 10. Um, Pre-COVID, it was nothing like that. It was like one, one uh, 40. So resin's just 
gone through the roof, unfortunately. Same with cloth. Cloth's gone up. Um, what else? Even this spray glue. Fucking don't ask how much that is. It's like 20 odd bucks for the 90. Anyway, but that's it. So everything's going up another 50. Um, and it is what it is. It doesn't bother me. I mean, you can only, my freight, give you an example. Freight for a box to the US is, you know, about 900 bucks. Now it used to be, 450 so it's doubled now nothing we can do about it if you want to get the board that's what it costs you know and um, yeah so but you've got to put the prices up with it I'd rather not make a board than um, do it for under manufacturing costs but it's like any business you you can't work for nothing you cannot work for nothing um, yeah so but a lot of people um, don't want to pay that and I've got no problems with it I would never ever it's like Lamborghini here's a good example there are so many people in the world that would love a Lamborghini, but they're not going to pay 400000 for it. They haven't got the money or they're not going to pay it. They don't want to pay that much. They might want to pay 200000 which means they're not going to get a Lamborghini. So they'll get a another type of sports car. Won't be as good, but they'll get one. And the same goes with surfboards. You get what you pay for. Um, some boards are ridiculously overpriced. I've never understood that. Um, I've seen boards, even the other day I checked them out just to see where everyone was at. And I was really surprised to see um, how much more expensive some brands are charging. But what you're paying for isn't the board. You're paying for all the extra shit um, the videos they make and all this other stuff and they're advertising and it's, it's just yeah most of the small guys like myself are charging what the board costs so you're getting a true indication of what the real cost is and the ones that are skimming off the top and not doing much some of those labels well you're understanding what the, the difference is on that skim price pretty full on Now the last run, and that is with the 1200. Yay. Then I'll go and have a couple, and then I'll come back and lamb swill it, buff, buff it up. It's uh, really good how if all my clients, I, I called Alan um, earlier on 
I te- oh, sorry, text him, he's at work. And I just said, hey Alan, I'm polishing Natalie's board now. Um, it'll be finished the Sabo to pick up. Can you put the balance in? And then uh, Alan's gone, yep, doing it now. Put the balance in, although I had to go shopping with Kim's mum. So he put the balance in and then uh, I polished it as soon as I got back from shopping. I'm doing it now. But And then he texted me and said, hey mate, can we pick it up Saturday? Which is fine. Now the way that works, because because we're a small business, we, we're not doing lots of boards. So as the board gets finished, we need to be paid type thing. And, and that's what I tell clients. Um, I always text, pay it, and then, you know, you can pick it up. I can't, you know, if someone says, oh, I don't want to pick it up for three weeks, can I pay for it then? I go, oh, no. I never, that's, you know, it's like, well, I've worked on two boards, that's my pay for the week. So, But I let people know that in advance, so they know in our small businesses, we need that type of thing, you know, where... I haven't got 50 boards going through and an overdraft, I keep it real simple. Make it, get paid, next. But all my clients have been really good. I get a, as well, I, I get a 50% deposit up front because what's happened now with the prices with COVID, the day of a $400 deposit, you know, on a on a $1,900 board or a, or a $1,700 board, it's long gone because the blank cost resin, you've got to, all the carrying costs, you've got to get that up front. Otherwise, you have to carry that as well. And then what happens then, you end up, um, you know, incurring interest if you, you know, um, suddenly even a small operation can incur, incur like a 20 grand material bill. But if you've got everyone paying their balance, that means the material part of their board's covered. So you don't have to worry about it. And that was something we did pre-COVID because because we were like 12 weeks out and we always had like 20 boards in front of us, we just couldn't carry, you know, that sort of thing. And then if someone's paying a, you know, for argument's sake, $900 deposit um, over 20 boards, that's $18,000. So that means I don't have to carry that cost and pay interest or something. Not many people can pull out eighteen thousand dollars on a small operation so and it's their board so they they buy that and then that's half the thing done and then basically when it's finished the other 50 percent i do that with all my overseas stuff but then it just got too hard where we were getting some orders where the blank was you know 680 bucks and the deposit was only 400 and it just didn't work out and then i thought no can't keep doing that so I let people know that we do that and everyone's been happy it's just like anything if you haven't got that stress of trying to carry that and um, the client does it for their product it works out really good some places won't even order your product until you pay for it in full So back in the day, it was 50 bucks for a deposit, and that was when that was when boards were like 300 bucks, right? Now the blanks were about 60 in those days, so it didn't really cover all the costs. It just meant that if you didn't come and pick it up, you lost 50 bucks. But those days are long gone. No one's going to tie up. X amount of labour and materials and especially in some of these boards and if someone doesn't turn up well then you've got the cost of the $800 or $850 there and then you can sell the board and then um, if they don't want it and then you can recoup them that after the board's sold if they ever come back or something you know but yeah. So it's just a bit of common sense how we do business now. So many businesses get themselves into trouble by about by extending themselves so much and it's just a, a little way to understand don't extend yourself to a point where your business is going to suffer 
or something like COVID will destroy you. For us, COVID's been the best time for making boards. It's funny that the biggest, biggest scam has turned out to be one of the best things for surfboard making. Not anymore now, it's gone now. We're back to free COVID times. But right, so all I'm doing here is wet and drying the edge of the machine mark that's on the bottom and top. So we don't have a line there. I'm using 1200. Right, so I'll just hose this off and then I'll come back after I have my coffee and start polishing. Look at that, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? It's going to look nice, wet and dry, okay? Now I'm just going to turn the aircon off, it's getting a bit warm. Yes, I do have aircon in here. And I'll turn the camera off. 